Hi, I'm Dr. Bryony Kaur, Technology Analyst at ID Tech X, and I'm here with Samuel uh, Jericho from the 3D Labs at the TU in Berlin. Now, Samuel, could you tell me a little bit more about uh, 3D Labs? Yeah, so we are an institution at the Technical University of Berlin and we are specialized in 3D scanning and 3D printing and we have uh, two big topics, medicine, technology and museums. Okay, all right. So could you tell me a little bit more about the products and the technology that you're showcasing at the ID Tech X show? Yeah, right now we are showing two big sculptures. One from an Akhenaten. Uh, it's, a, it's a pharaoh that you can find in the Egyptian Museum. It's a replica. And the other one is a polar bear Knut. Uh, that um, it was a famous bear in 2011. And this is a replica based on CT scans. And we both uh, printed them with a plastic a plaster printer in gypsum. And yeah, um, we also have other technologies, um, plastic printer. Um, okay. Uh, uh, that can and be. Some of the models here. Yeah, we mostly produce smaller models with a plastic printer. Uh, it's called a selective laser sintering, and the right. models can be. They are flexible. Uh, the gypsum models are not, but yes. they are big, yes. and the small models are a little bit flexible. And, but we uh, not only print beautiful models, but also functional models, so replacement parts, uh, parts that have to work, that have to, um, 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 yeah, adapters, uh, switches, mm -hmm. uh, cases for ele electronics, mm -hmm. uh, but also our, our logo and sculptures um, and. Um, uh, uh, resized uh, CD, CT files. It looks and like something like that would be very fragile. It is. Uh, in fact, something already broke up. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's no problem. We can still reprint it. And it's uh, sized up by the factor of two. The original is like this big. Right. But uh, resizing on the computer is no problem. But with a gypsum printer, uh, we cannot do all sizes because the models are more fragile. But gypsum print can be colored, so if you want to have a multicolored object, it has to be gypsum. Okay. And yeah, so we um, are very um, diverse in what we do. It's uh, technical and cultural, uh, so serious and fun objects are possible with us. And yeah, we work together with museums and, uh, for example, um, institutions like the German Heart Center. Mm -hmm. But actually everyone can come with a 3D file to print. Okay, all right. So do you think museums would be the primary beneficiary of this technology? Uh, not primary, but they are benef benefiting. They are, uh, really see the advantage of 3D scanning and printing. For example, um, if you need a replica because you want to lend the original to another country, then they uh, could show an empty post. but. Uh, most museums want to show a replica, or if you want to restore uh, an object, you don't exercise on the original, you do it with the copy. Or a very um, uh, interesting application is uh, creating touchable models for blind people, mm -hmm. uh, so they are, don't have to rely on, on a hearing text, uh, a description of the models, but they can touch it. And there, uh, resizing a model that makes sense, but, um, Seeing people would uh, go closer to see an object um, more in more detail, but blind people cannot do it. That's why we can resize models uh, um, either bigger or smaller depending on on what details we want to show. But uh, touchable models are also uh, nice for uh, every kid uh, that uh, they're, they're, who are not happy while just looking at objects and. Making objects of museums touchable is the next big step, right. and uh, 3D scanning is the start to make a replica, and uh, um, 3D printing is uh, is the end. Uh, maybe not completely the end. Sometimes we have to post-process the objects to create a specific surface. The printers can only make one kind of surface. That's the limit. So if we want to have uh, for example, a golden moon, we cannot print in gold, it's way too expensive, so we uh, print it in polyamide 12 and then we coat it with the leaf gold. So this is one example of a post processing and 
uh, this is only for our benefit. We want to showcase this, but uh, all museum objects are uh, helpful for, for, uh, for bringing museum exhibitions a step forward because museums try to stay um, modern and uh, on time with their exhibits. Great, okay, and then just one last question. What do you think of the ID Tech Egg show? Well, for us it's very interesting. Uh, when we were first exhi exhibiting here, we were a little bit um, uh, strange because we were uh, producing nothing electronic, mm -hmm. but it was very welcomed by the, uh, by the people and that's why we are here every year. And uh, we are a nice addition, I think. And uh, when we take a break and look through all the other technologies, we also, we, of course, we learn stuff because it's not our it's not our topic. And we find um, every time we find a connection between two different technologies, ours and the other, where there are potential um, steps for the future. Mm -hmm. So some develop a material uh, that has never been used in 3D printing, for example, and then we are interested in what the, can the material do for 3D printing for the for for the uh, for the sculptures or prototypes, and or electric uh, conductivity. We never thought about it, but it's obviously a topic, so we uh, also think about it. So the um, connection uh, between the so different. Um, companies is very interesting for us and also talking with people some come and don't know jack about 3d printing that's interesting and some people know everything mm. and still we can uh, tell about uh, uh, um, as you as you realize now i can i cannot stop talking so it's such a fair is very interesting for us and we are happy to come back next year well thank you very much for giving us such a detailed insight into your beautiful models that you brought along you're welcome. Thank you.